Here's the way we were all trained. Land use is not our business. Somebody else's business. Doesn't matter. Doesn't affect the transportation system. Roadway expansion was our weapon. It was our weapon against congestion, clearly. And we tried to solve the congestion problem here. And quite frankly, we came pretty close. What we've seen over the last 20 years, of course, is peak hour travel has doubled and the volume has doubled. And we call this a sprawl factor. And if you look at this circle, what this says, okay, you make the improvement, there's no roadway congestion, what happens? The land further out becomes accessible. You know, there becomes pressure, land prices start to rise. Hey, subdivisions and businesses start to develop. More residents are shopping, more tra trips are being made. And what happens, congestion develops. And then the demand is fix it, state of New Jersey. And obviously it is a never ending cycle of sprawl. The other thing that's happening in the state of New Jersey, and this is something that's a national trend, we all love to live on cul-de-sacs. That type of sparse hierarchy in terms of alternatives for transportation means everybody eventually has to come out to one spot on the major state road or county road, and that spot becomes unbelievably congested. There's no interconnections. Here's a, a good, I think, graphic that kind of depicts what we're talking about. What you have is a school, a housing development, an apartment complex, and a mall. And of course, all the access and all the driveways are on one major roadway. So what happens? That major roadway just becomes swamp. And what we're trying to preach in this a little bit is we need to really look at how we develop, how we come up with plans, and how that affects transportation. It's amazing to me when a major developer comes into a municipality, um, you clearly review plans, clearly you look at how they're going to get sewer, how are they going to get electricity, how are they going to have water provided and services and so forth, yet transportation is an afterthought. You've got to look at this transportation system and regional mobility is important, but so is community context, so is the environment. They're all important and they have to be looked at together. And so one of the things we're saying is just be really, be a designer, just don't follow the book. The book is a guideline, but let's really think about this. Really, what are we talking about here? Number one, use our engineering skills. You know, we really need to look at standards and our models, our starting points. We really need to partner. It's the number one thing, I think. It needs to be a partnership and there needs to be a recognition. There's a lot of different contexts to consider when you are looking at a planning and a transportation system together. Use the grid. Don't be afraid to go off the system. The grid network has worked, it continues to work, it does provide for a way where not every single trip has to go out to that main state highway and if you have this grid system, the flexibility that it provides allows for some of the local trip making at lower speeds to be made and thereby making the other system a little bit more uh, usable for the regional trip maker. The last thing I'd just say is produce highways that are safe and efficient for users and acceptable to non-users of the environment. And that came from the Ashto Green Book that was published back in 1984. It's okay to look at these different parameters. Regional mobility is important. So is local mobility. So is the environment. So is the community context. 